Let's talk about who is to blame for Anakin Skywalker's transition to the dark side. And could it have been avoided? Obviously, someone will say that it could have been avoided by simply not taking the guy off Tatooine. But, understandably, that's too boring and not good, really. Because without him, most likely the heroes from Tatooine just wouldn't have gotten out in time. So I'm not even going to consider that option. So, so the boy was taken from Tatooine, the Council refused to teach him. But Quigon asked to watch what he did, and how he did it, and memorize it, so that Anakin would learn somehow. Then, as we know, the High Knight died on Naboo, and Obi-Wan was allowed to teach the boy. And so, as they say, it began, didn't it? Actually, the fact that Anakin was taught is not the reason he eventually fell to the dark side at all. And even Palpatine, with his manipulations, isn't really to blame. I mean, guilty, sure, but even that could have been easily leveled. The reason, in fact, was quite different. So, let's think back to that moment when Qui-Gon takes Anakin away from Tatooine. The boy in general doesn't mind leaving, but there's a nuance. He doesn't want to leave his mom. No, Anakin realizes that Shmi won't be lost. Watto in general is not the worst mind on the planet. He may well let her go, or he may just take care of her. Again, he may be a peddler to the bone, but he had some decency in him. In fact, he sold her to Lars, who freed Shmi and married her. So, Watto by and large didn't fail. But, understandably, that wasn't what Anakin had in mind. He loved his mom, since he has no one else but her. Yes, then Anakin sympathizes with Qui-Gon, who in general is a very good and kind man, but we all know very well what happened to him on Naboo. So Kenobi takes over the boy's training. No, I'm not going to say anything bad about Obi-Wan right now. He's done an honest job of teaching the boy here, and he's done it well. Except that Obi-Wan didn't really understand what it was or how it was to teach a boy who was taken from his family at such an advanced age. He didn't understand the longing for his mother, didn't understand much else. Yes, he tried to replace the boy's family, talking about how the whole order is your family now, and all that. But what worked for those taken from their parents at a year or two old, worked worse when the child was taken at a later age. And Anakin was over two years old. What was he at that point, six or seven? Yoda said it was too late to teach for a reason, though he wasn't entirely right either. So, let's see when the boy had his first breakdown, which was the catalyst that led him to the dark side of the Force. Some would say it was because of his marriage to Padme. After all, Jedi aren't allowed to have families. But it actually happened much earlier, albeit in the same second episode. Remember when Anakin and Padme arrived on Tatooine? Anakin once again had a vision about his mom, and he couldn't take it. Especially since he had a ship at his fingertips and a girl who could command that ship. As we know, Anakin was assigned as Padme's bodyguard, and the girl took advantage of that. Well, or Anakin took advantage of it, it's hard to tell now. But the point is that they flew to Tatooine, where everything happened. As I mentioned earlier, Watto sold Shmi to a farmer named Klig Lars, who freed the woman and married her. Shmi, by the way, was an attractive woman, as seen in episode one. Yes, no makeup or anything. But if given a chance to rest properly, to live in a more decent climate, she would have blossomed quite nicely. Lars must have seen that in her. But by the time Anakin arrived on the planet, Shmi had been kidnapped by the Tuskins. I don't particularly remember all their rituals and stuff right now, but they tortured her for a very, very long time. And Anakin almost made it. He was just a little bit short of saving his mum. Maybe if he'd come a day sooner, Shmi would still be alive. But alas, that's what happened, and Anakin's mom died in his arms. And then, as we all remember, the entire Tuscan tribe simply ceased to exist. Remember how that was portrayed in the movie, how Yoda saw it, and how Anakin told Padme about it, and how the makers of the real Star Wars heroes' pictures played it up. So, it's clear that for the first time, Anakin was close to going to the dark side, at the very moment when he was crushing the Tuscans. He killed everyone there. Warriors, old men, women, children, dogs. And that's the case that needs to be examined in more detail. Clearly, if nothing had happened to Shmi, this wouldn't have happened. Moreover, Anakin wouldn't have had to fly to Tatooine, and he most certainly wouldn't have fallen to the dark side of the Force. But how would that have been accomplished? Actually, it seems very, very simple to me. Actually, the Jedi Order, 
as I understand it, as I've been written about, as I know, was a very, very non-poor organization. The Order had money for that matter. I wonder, by the way, if they had to buy back slaves. I mean, there's a promising intelligent, but he's a slave. The Huts, the Tudarians, the Mafia, you name it. And obviously, no one's going to give him up for nothing. So something tells me they've probably encountered these situations before, but no one thought it would be a good idea to buy back that Shmi. Although most likely no one knew about her, Quigon probably hadn't told him about her, and Obi-Wan hadn't even seen her. I don't know why she didn't think of ransoming the poor woman herself. Maybe she thought the Jedi should do it. I don't know. But if someone had thought of the simple idea of buying Shmi out of slavery, giving her a job and settling her on Naboo or Coruscant, and just let Anakin know about it. You could even keep them from seeing each other. It wouldn't matter. He'd just know that his mum was okay. And that would give the guy some kind of anchor in his life. I'm about to say something extremely unpopular. But has anyone ever thought that Anakin started dating Padme? Not because he was attracted to her as a woman, but also because he needed someone to behave like a human being with him. In a way... He was drawn to her also because he needed her as a mum. Let's also remember this. When they met on Tatooine, how old was Anakin? Six or seven, wasn't he? And Padme was an adult. By the time of Episode 2, when Anakin came of age, how old was Padme? She was older than him, for what it's worth. And aside from the fact that he developed an attraction to her, either later when they arrived on Naboo or during their adventures on Geonosis, Anakin primarily saw her as a female friend. Yes, like the mom he lost. So if Shmi Skywalker had stayed alive, there wouldn't have been the Tuscan story, there wouldn't have been that almost transition to the dark side, and it probably would have been harder for Palpatine to drag Anakin to his side. Anakin wouldn't have been so easily manipulated, and he wouldn't have fallen for the vision of his wife's torment. So, it could very well be that it was the Jedi's short-sightedness that ruined them all, but if they had helped this woman, bought her out of slavery, things would have been very different.